What up, people? Coach V, New Breed Boxing. How to be a professional boxer. Everybody wants to know, how do you become a professional boxer? Well, it's a lot simpler than it should be, unfortunately, because there's a lot of people out there that are professional boxers that really, you know, aren't on the pro level as far as what I'm, what I'm seeing, I mean, I see fights all the time where it looks like they just took a dude out of the crowd and threw some trunks and some gloves on him and said, yo, see what happens. Um, in my opinion, it's way too easy to become a pro fighter. Basically, it depends on what state you live in. You go to the athletic commission in your state, you pass medicals. Depending on what state you live in, some medicals are more extensive than others. New York is very elaborate with their medicals. I mean, they want MRIs, EKGs, blood work, um, you know, note from your mom, they want it all, it's crazy. Um, but that's a good thing, it is good, um, I ain't gonna lie. I mean, cause some states, they just give you what's called the mirror test, where they put a mirror to your mouth, and if it fogs up, that means you're alive and you're good to go. They sign your wraps and you in there. And then whatever happens after that, they can really care less. And you can tell by some of the opponents that they put in the ring. So unlike the NFL, the NBA, and you know, other organized sports, they scout out people to be pros, usually in those sports, based on your background. You got a strong pedigree of, you know, being a, a great, you know, uh, competitor in whatever sports you're in. You got a track record of this in boxing. The most they're gonna ask you for is five to 10 amateur fights as, as your background. Anybody can go fight five to 10 amateur fights. And some states don't even ask for that which is really sad, you know? Cause that's why you see some of these fights, if you watch through like bloopers on boxing, like on YouTube, you're gonna see people out there that, like I said, you could tell they never trained a day in their life and somebody signed off on it and they let them get in the ring, you know? And it's, it's the, uh, that's the, the sport of boxing cause you got the A side and you got the B side. The A side is like the Mayweather, the Canelos, those kind of guys. The Javante Davises, those are the A side. Whoever they fight, because they said they have such a strong promoter, whoever they fight is going to be at a severe disadvantage, usually. It's very rare that you're going to see them in a pitch battle with somebody else on the exact same level as them. Except, you know, with the exception of when it's like a mandatory and the fans are demanding it, that's one thing. But now it feels like guys want to make a whole career out of fighting crash dummies. So there's a big demand for them. So they're allowing a lot of people to, you know, be professional opponents basically is what they are. I strongly advise against taking that route. That's what happens to people, you know, they just rush their careers, don't got a good team behind them and really aren't too concerned with their health because there's just a multitude of things that could go wrong from the physical, you know, aspect of it to the financial side of it, to your personal integrity. Just don't do it to yourself, man. If you're gonna do this, take it serious. Get yourself in the right gym, get the right coach, get the right manager, and link up with a good promoter. You know, that's what you want to do. Don't be an opponent for somebody else. And that's pretty much it. So, you know, as far as being a pro fighter, in my opinion, that's how you do it. I mean, I mean, that's that's how you do it. But in my opinion, should you do it? That's something that is up to your coach. Me personally, if you don't have at least the ability to hang in five, six rounds of sparring against another pro fighter that has five to 10 fights with a winning record, not just anybody, because people don't look at the wins, losses, and draws. They just see a guy and take it for face value. Oh, he's an amateur, he's a pro. I know amateurs that are way better than guys that are legally professional. The, the title doesn't have any um, bearing on the actual experience in general. Um, so if you can't go five, six rounds with a guy with five to 10 fights, in my opinion, as a professional with a winning record, then you have no business competing professionally because you have no idea who you're going to be in the ring with. You could be in the ring with, a, with an easy opponent, or you could be in the ring with the next Errol Spence and you'll be his first victim in this war path. <laughs> and you don't want that. You know what I mean? You want to, I mean, you see, listen, this is fighting. You never know what's going to happen. And I always tell everybody, your conditioning is your insurance. But again, proper matchmaking is, is part of having a good team behind you. 
So, you know, if you got somebody looking out for you, they gotta do everything they can to do the calculations beforehand to make sure you're not walking into a suicide mission. So again, make sure you got your experience, take your time, get a good team behind you, and then I think you'll be ready. And then you can go back to the how to become a professional. Now that you know you should be a professional. Hope this was informative. If it was, like, subscribe, comment. Check me out on Instagram at coach.v underscore. Till the next time, we out. Out.